This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number seven from the January 2023 Pure Mathematics P3 paper from LXL, the International A Level. Here we're given a curve which has equation x equals 3 tan y minus pi over 6. So this is a, an equation where x is in terms of y, where x is a real number and y has values between minus pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. And we're told um, to show that dy dx equals a over x squared plus b. So basically, they've told us to find dy dx in terms of x. Sometimes they could uh, write the question, find dy dx in terms of x. All right, so now, <clears throat> basically what you could do is you could try to make y the subject of the formula, all right, and then find dy dx. The problem being is we'll have something in terms of inverse tan. And we don't have any um, results for inverse tan, okay? And it's something which actually we could, if we wanted to, go further along the, the formula book and look at some of the results in the further maths section where they do have results for the, the differential of inverse tan and inverse sine and inverse cosine. However, I want to teach you how to do this as if you, you haven't seen those results and not relying on those results and understanding how to do it from the... Uh, you know, from the first principles from the beginning. I think that's way better for you, for your understanding. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you two different methods of finding this result and finding what A and B are using this uh, method where we, we're going to work from the beginning. So the first thing I would do here is instead of finding dy dx, I will find dx dy, but it will be, of course, in terms of y. All right. So if we have, first we find dx dy. Now, when you find dx dy, this is like three times tan of something. And one of the results that we have for the tangent of theta, if you differentiate it, if this is f of x, this is one of the results we have in the formula book. You can find it there. Um, this is going to give you sec squared theta. It's something that you should remember and know. Okay, so this gives you sec squared theta. All right, and um, this is derived from sine theta over cosine theta and using the quotient rule. Okay, when you differentiate, this is u, this is v, you can derive it, but we don't need to do that. Okay, so um, it's derived from, from this, you know, using tan of sine theta over cosine theta and then using the quotient rule. Okay, and you end up with sec squared theta. So this 3 tan of the angle y minus pi over 6 will differentiate to give you 3 times secant squared of y minus pi over 6 and we have to check if there's some function inside the function that we differentiate when you differentiate what's inside the function you get one so that there's nothing to multiply this by so that's dx dy in the end i'm going to write dy dx but i'm going to first of all find out what sec squared y minus pi over 6 is in terms of x in terms of x because the answer has to be in terms of x if the question said just find dy dx in terms of y then our answer would be just one over this Right, so now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, use two methods. I'm going to first use a method which involves using um, identities. Identities. Okay, I'll try and write neatly for once. Okay, or well, neatly as I can. So I'm going to first try to deal with identities. Now, we have tan of something and we have the secant of something. All right, secant squared of something. How are tan and secant related to each other with identities? Well, there is an identity that links them together. And if you forget what that identity is, you can go back to the origin, the original identity. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. This is one of the original identities that you must know. All right. And don't confuse it with sine theta plus cosine. Don't think it means that sine, sine theta plus cosine equals one. That's wrong. That is not true. And many students will say, sir, but if you, differ, if you, if you find the square root of both sides, you're going to get this. No, you're not. Okay, if you find the square root of both sides, you're going to get this. Okay, that's what you're going to get. And they're not the same as sine theta plus cosine theta equals 1. Just like if you have 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. If you find the square root of both sides, you don't get 3 plus 4 equals 5. That's not true. This is true. This is not true. You will get the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5. That's what you'd get, all right? So, because they're separate terms, they're not like one term. 
So that's why you can't do that. So be very careful not to write sine theta plus cosine theta equals 1. It's sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So you take the sine of an angle and you square that result. And you take the cosine of that same angle and you square that result. It will always add up to give you 1. Okay, so now... Where was I? Okay, so we have to link tan theta and sec squared theta. So if I want to have tan theta, I know tan theta, the other main identity is tan theta equals sine theta over cosine theta. So if I divide every term by cosine squared theta, I'll end up with a tan squared theta here. This will give you 1, and I'll have 1 over cosine squared theta, which is it's, re it's a reciprocal function with sec squared theta. So this gives you tan squared theta plus 1 equals sec squared theta. And so that is the identity that we're going to use to link these two together. Okay, so now what I know is, let me take what we get, what they gave us. They told us that x equals, they told us that x is equal to 3 times the tan of the angle y minus pi over 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make tan of y minus pi over 6 the subject of this. So I can say x over 3 equals 3 times the tan of y minus pi over 6. Sorry, equals, I've divided by 3. My bad. So that's going to be x over 3 equals tan time, tan of y minus pi over 6. So that's what the tan of y minus pi over 6 is. So if I take this identity, I can replace this with x over 3. So I have x over 3 squared plus 1 equals secant squared theta. Okay? In this case, that my theta is going to be... So I'll start off like this. I'll start off like this just to make it clear. So what I can say now from this identity is that the tan squared of y minus pi over 6 plus 1 is the same as the secant squared of y minus pi over 6. Let's just do it step by step. So I know that this is the same as pi over 3. So this is like pi over, sorry, x over 3. This is the same as x over 3. So this is like x over 3 squared because remember this means tan of all of this squared. Okay, so that's x over 3 squared. Okay, and so we have x over 3 squared plus 1 equals, and this is the secant squared of y minus pi over 6. And that's what I'm looking for. So this is basically, if I, if I just simplify that as x squared over 9 plus 1 equals secant squared of y minus pi over 6. So I can say, therefore, the secant squared of pi minus y over, sorry, y minus pi over 6, secant squared of y minus pi over 6 is equal to, if you make this into one fraction, this is 9 over 9, so you have x squared plus 9 over 9. So I can replace this, all of this here, this can be replaced, all of this can be replaced with this. Okay, they can be replaced. So I can say now, that dx dx dy is equal to 3 times x squared plus 9 over 9. x squared plus 9 over 9. And the 3 cancels with the 9. Remember, this is like 3 over 1. That gives you 3 here. So we say dx dy is equal to x squared plus 9 over 3. Therefore, dy dx is equal to 3 over x squared plus 9, which is what we had to show, and find the value of a and b. So there's a and there's b. We can write if we want a equals 3 and b equals 9. So there's the answer to this question. Now, I mentioned that there's also another way we could use to f solve this question, and I'm going to show you the other way, and that's using a right angle triangle. Okay, so we use identities. Uh, another method, which I actually prefer, but most students like identities, um, is using a right angle triangle. Right angle triangle. Okay, now for that, we start off in the same way. We have x equals, we start off with x equals 3 times the tangent of y minus pi over 6. Okay, and we say, okay, I'm going to re, I'm going to first of all do the same thing, dx dy equals 3 times secant squared of y minus pi over 6. Now, I want to replace 
the secant squared in terms of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing first. I'll say the tangent of the angle y minus pi over 6 is equal to x over 3. So what I'm going to do, do now is I'm going to draw a right angle triangle. Okay, a right angle triangle like this. And so you have a right angle here. I'm going to call this angle, the angle here, which is y minus pi over 6. And I'll think to myself, the tangent of y minus pi over 6 is equal to x over 3. So in this case, that would be the opposite, and that would be the adjacent if it was in a right angle triangle. So that would be x, and that would be 3, which means that this hypotenuse would be the square root of the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides, which is x squared plus 3 squared, which is 9. Okay, so now I can find out what the secant of this angle is. So I can say the secant of y minus pi over 6, which is this whole angle here. Now it's the, inv it's the uh, reciprocal, sorry, of the cosine of this angle. Now the cosine of this angle would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. This is adjacent, this is the hypotenuse. So the secant is going to be hy hypotenuse over the adjacent. So it's going to be the square root of x squared plus 9 over 3. Okay. Um, so that's going to be the secant of this angle. So we can say dx dy is equal to 3 times. Now it's going to be, this is the secant, we want the secant squared. So it's going to be basically the square root of x squared plus 9 over 3 squared. Because this is secant squared. And this is secant of the angle. So that will give us dx dy equals 3 times. And you have x squared plus 9. When you square that, you're going to get x squared plus 9 over. And when you square 3, three you're going to get 9. The 3 cancels with the 9, leaving with 3. So we can therefore say, therefore, dy dx is equal to the reciprocal of this, because that's dx dy, 3 over x squared plus 9. And we get the answer, as we did before, when we used the identities, we ended up with the same answer, 3 over x squared plus 9. Okay, so there's two different ways of, of solving this problem. There's actually a third way, just looking at the formula later on in the formula book and try to relate it to this. That can get a little bit complicated when you're trying to figure out and when you angle like this, but, um, you know, that's possible to use that. But I don't like to teach the students just to use a formula. I, will, I like you to understand what's going on and how you get this, and these are two different ways of doing it. So I'm going to leave it at that for part A. Okay, now for part B of question number seven. We are told um, the point P with y coordinates pi over 3 lies on the curve C, which has given this equation here. Given that the tangent to C crosses the x axis at the point Q, find in simplest form the exact x coordinate of Q. So, first of all, we're told about the point P. The x coordinate of P, we're not told. The y coordinate of P is pi over 3. And we have a, I'm just going to draw a random line, a curve, and uh, this is, doesn't represent the actual curve, just to give you an idea of what I'm doing here. There's a tangent, say that's the tangent to the curve at the point P. And the coordinates of P are XP, which we don't know, and pi over 3. This tangent goes on to meet the x-axis at this point Q. And we have to find the x-coordinate of Q. This is going to be 0, of course. So we've got to find the x-coordinate of Q. All right? The x-coordinate of Q would be, you know, it's on the y-axis, on the x-axis. So the x-coordinate of Q is going to be when y equals 0, okay, for that point. So for this line here. So we need to find the equation of this line. We need to start finding the equation of this line, and then that will help us find the coordinates of point Q. So that's what's in our head. So basically, we need to find the equation... We have to start finding the equation of the tangent at P. The equation of the tangent to the curve at P. Now, the tangent is a straight line as we see. So we need two things. We need a point on the line which we have half of that. We need the coordinates. We have the y coordinate. We need the x coordinate as well. And we need the gradient of the tangent to the curve. We need the gradient to the tangent at that point P. Okay, so at P. All right, so for both of these, of course, I need to know what the x coordinate at p is. For me to find the gradient at p, I can use this and replace the x coordinate at p. That's the gradient function. And to, for, for me to find the x coordinate of, of p, I need to find 
I need to use this. So for, for this, I can find the x coordinate at p using the equation because I know the y coordinate. So I know the x coordinate of p is going to be when y equals pi over 3. This is when y equals pi over 3. So I can replace it into this equation, which we took from the original question in part a. Part a has all this information, and that's what we derived, or what we showed in part a as well for the gradient function, dy dx. So anyway, so we have 3 times the tan of y, which is pi over 3, minus pi over 6, which gives us 3 times the tangent of, this is pi over 3, that's 2 pi over 6 minus 1 pi over 6, which is 1 pi over 6. Now the tangent of pi over 6 is like the tangent of 30 degrees. I can use my calculator, but I'm going to do this. This is a right angle triangle, this is 30 degrees, this is our pi over 6. That would be 2, that would be 1, that would be root 3, if we take our original uh, iso uh, equilateral two side two two units sided um, triangle. So that's going to be um, the tangent is opposite over adjacent, so one over root three. So it's three times one over root three, which is three times root three over three in in, in third form. So you end up with the root three cancelling, so you get root three. So we can confirm that. Now calculate. We can say uh, three times the tan of pi over six. We are in radian mode. Yes, we are. So I'll put pi over 6, and that should give us root 3. And it does. Okay, good. So now we know that the coordinates of p are root 3 and pi over 3. Now we need to find the, the gradient of the tangent at p. So we've got dy dx equals 3 over x squared plus 9. Now we know x is equal to root 3. So dy dx is 3 over root 3 squared plus 9. So that's going to be 3 over, that's 3 plus 9, which is 12. So that's a quarter. So we can say that the gradient of the tangent is equal to 1 over 4. So now we have the information needed to find the equation of the, the tangent. So we have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we have y minus y1, which is pi over 3. That's at P. And we have times M, which is a quarter, times X minus root 3. Now we know that Q is when Y equals 0 on the X axis. Okay, Q is on the X axis. So we, can, we, we know that the, and the X coordinate of Q is when Y equals 0. Okay, so I can replace Y with 0. I have pi mi minus pi with 3 equals a quarter times, I'll keep this in the bracket for now, and I'll multiply both sides by 4, so I get minus 4 pi over 3 equals x minus root 3, so therefore x is equal to root 3 minus 4 pi over 3. And if I want to, this, uh, this says in its simplest form, it doesn't say it as one fraction, but just, I, I prefer to write it as one fraction, that would be, you know, under one fraction, that would be 3 root 3 minus 4 pi all over 3. That's like, I, I think, a more complete answer. That's the x coordinate of q. 3 root 3 minus 4 pi. Let me make it look clear. That looks like a 5. Be careful how you write your answers so that they're clear. 3 times root 3 minus 4 pi all over 3. There is the x coordinate of q. And that is the answer to this question 7 part b. Okay, so um, that's, you know, solves this problem. And um, other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this section over here. The playlist that will appear in this section is for the topic of, um, I'll put it under the topic of uh, trig, trig identities and equations. I think there, there is a section maybe on reciprocal functions. If, if it is there, I'll put it in this playlist over there as well. And there'll be a video which will show you how to use my channel in an efficient way to find what you need. Thank you for watching and see you soon.